treat it with the respect you should. But if you realize that your child, and some women are only blessed with one, and sometimes we look down on those who don't have. You know, in my lifetime, I have seen women who have not had children make better mothers yes. than those who have children. Yes. So I say to you, if you have not been blessed as yet with the fruit of the womb, mother someone else's child. Because you might be the only mother that that child has. And I think uh, as parents, and particularly black parents, we have a way of praising our children negatively. Can you praise negatively? Sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? But sadly, many of us, rather than saying well done, we tell them something else, and we pray that God give them the wisdom to decipher and make sense of what we've told them. Fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them to resentment, but rear them tenderly in the training and discipline and counsel and admonition of the Lord. Keywords, irritate, provoke, anger, exasperate, resentment, negative terms negative terms, but the, the verse ends by saying rear them tenderly in the training, discipline, and counsel, and admonition of the Lord. Many of us have children, and we live in an age where children have more rights, and they haven't a clue what the word responsibility means. I raised my children in the last third of the 20th century. Today's children are more challenging. They've been given many rights in the law, but no responsibility. Think about that. It's our job, with the help of the Lord, to raise them to become good law-abiding citizens, fit and ready for eternity. I'm going to go through now some strategies that I think will help us to overcome. So 12 strategies to help you raise kingdom children. Pray over them and anoint them regularly. Push, pray, persevere until something happens. Sometimes we pray and then we stop. When my late husband was still alive and I was praying and travailing. When I'm finished, he'd look at me and say, God, not deaf, you know. But there are times when you need to pray those prayers. And as mothers, you have to push through. And sometimes I say mothers, but I should say fathers as well. Because in my case, it was my father who taught me. My grandmother started in Jamaica, but when I came to England, my father took over and he made sure we spent time studying the word. He made sure that we spent time worshiping God. He made sure that we spent time doing what was right. And any service that was on, my father was never a member of the church that I became a member of, but every Sunday morning, Mama had gone to work, she worked in the hospital, he would get up. Mommy would come out here Saturday night and we'd tie it with a tire that you better make sure it don't come off so your hair don't get messed up. Um, that would get us up on a Sunday morning and get us ready so that when the Sunday school van came, we were ready to go. And if you miss that Sunday school van, you're in trouble. And Sunday morning, I didn't want no beating, so I made sure I was ready. And so fathers, you have your role to play as well. You must be proactive, and I'm sure all of you here are. Anoint your children regularly. Anoint their hands. Anoint their lips. Anoint their head. Anoint their feet. I cannot begin to emphasize the importance of that. You know, people say to me, Leonie, why are you so lucky? I said, me, lucky? They say, yes, you have three children and you raise them on your own. I said, that's, that's just the favor and grace of God. 
and I did my part. I'd say to some mothers who are in my situation, do you know what? When you're sleeping, I'm walking around, praying and anointing my children. And so I never ever had to go up to school because of bad behavior, never. I never ever had to go to a police station to say I'm bailing out my child. And I know many of you didn't either, but I'm saying to our younger parents, think about what you're doing, think about how you speak to your children. And I know as black people, you know, we're rough. Some of us are really rough, but children emulate what they look up to. And if we want to break vicious cycles, we must make sure that we are being good role models. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. So persevere in prayer for your child. We live in a society that labels our children. If your child has been given a, a label, a diagnosis, attention deficit disorder, ADD, if they've been given a, a, a label, attention deficit disorder, I'm sorry, an hyperactivity disorder, you don't have to accept it. But if we tell you what the word says, Proverbs declares that there's death and life in our tongue. And we must be careful what we say. Be so careful. The second video that I had wanted to show you is uh, of people all over the place applying online for a job. They were given the job description. You would work 24 hours a day. You would not take lunch break. You had to be on call. You had to do everything. And at the end of it, these students, these interviewees were saying, no sir, that's illegal. You must have lunch break, at least 20 minutes. You must have this. You cannot be on your feet 24 seven doing any job. The interviewer was serious and he said, yes. He finished by saying, and you know what? There is someone already doing that job. Would you like, in fact, there are many people, billions of people doing that job. Who do you think is doing that job? A mother. Thank you very much. A mother, a father, a good father, and a good mother, because not all of them do, and we know that. Uh, okay, and so the job of a parent is never done. We are on call. My children are all grown up and have left home. But you know something? I think I worry about them more now than I did when they were in my house and tying on my feet. Because you're wondering if they're traveling, Lord, you're praying for them. You're, you're praying that things will work out at work. You're praying for their help. And so, you know, that you're not there with them, but you know who can be there with them. The last video uh, that I was going to show you is of a Jewish rabbi telling a story. He went to a party and he was asked, uh, somebody asked uh, another guest, do you remember me? The person said, no. Who are you? And he introduced himself. Then uh, he said to me, but you must remember me. He said to the, uh, the guest, you must remember me. At the end of the day, um, I became a teacher because of you. And so he, the rabbi said, how? What did I do to influence you? And, have you got volume? <laughs> no, I'll tell you the story. Uh, the, the, the person said, I remember you when I was in your class, just as a little boy. I stole another boy's watch because I desperately wanted a watch. The boy realized and came into the classroom and told you that his watch had been stolen. You asked everyone to return the watch if they had taken it. Nobody responded and he said, I was too ashamed to own up to what I had done. So the teacher said, I'm going to have to lock the door and ask you all to close your eyes and face the wall. All the little boys did that. And this time he's wetting himself with fear. The teacher went through their pockets and found the watch in his pocket. The teacher then unlocked the door and said, I found the watch and he returned it. Years later, when he met the young man, the man said to him, thank you very much because you didn't say anything to me. You didn't shame me. You didn't humiliate me in front of my friends. And to this day, you've never spoken to me about it. Thank you. The teacher said, well, see, I didn't know who it was because I had my eyes closed too. <laughs> and sometimes as parents, we 
have to close our eyes to the misdemeanors of our children. It might hurt you, but don't destroy them. When they have this negative attitude, pray for them. Sometimes we go in because we are mom and dad, and my oldest, my daddy used to say, must be, and as children we had to reply, carried out. And sometimes we go in that way now with our kids, but I'm saying that's not the best approach. I used to beat my children every time on my knees. I didn't have problems with them because I was always on my knees praying for them. So they didn't have time to, to get up to mischief. They didn't have time. I kept them very actively involved with all sorts of activities. It was church, it was learning instruments, it was going swimming, and they were all have to be expensive. Take them for walks in the park and show them nature. Take them for hike in the countryside. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. Watch what you're giving them to eat, because I see many parents giving their kids junk food. It's that foolishness must stop. Stop the McDonald's, stop the Kentucky, make them go to business. Anyway, let me take off my glasses now so I can read the rest of this little print. Continuing with the um, 12 strategies. Uh, strategy number two, declare good things over them on a regular basis in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 13. Teach them manners. Are you able to get to the last slide, please? Teach them manners. Respect for themselves and others. Discipline them appropriately in love. Teach them to love themselves and to love and serve the Lord. Some of our girls end up in trouble, not because they wanted to, but because we failed them as parents. They did not feel loved. So when some trifle boy came along and told them, say, you're nice, you know, daughter, they fell for the trick. They get pregnant and then we turn them out on the streets. Parents and fathers, you must step up to the mark. Your daughters need to hear you say to them, you're special. I love you, I'm proud of you. It's so, so, so important. So very important. Teach them to aim high, to be resilient, and to persevere Amen. to get results. Amen. Spend quality time with them. If it's half an hour you've got a week, make it matter so that you are engaging with them. You're not saying, now is your time, child. Come on, what do you want to talk about? All right, you don't want to talk about? I have things to do, bye. Engage with them, listen to what they have to say to you. It's not like my day when my parents say shut up and I shut up. My grandson who's three years old, if I say something to him, he's arguing his point with me. And my eyes are popping open and I'm thinking, but you're only three, where do you know that? It's quite scary. They are last days children and you need grace to raise them Amen. the kingdom way. Amen. Listen to them. Point number nine, believe in them. I'm so grateful for one of my mom's cousin-in-law because she believed in me. I have uh, my goddaughter's older sister, father engineer, mother a teacher, a very successful teacher. The first day the child went to secondary school, she had a wicked Jamaican hairstyle, lovely cane and all sorts. And the teacher looked at her and said, you make a good student of mine doing hair and beauty. She went home and told her mother, her mother tripped. Do you know what she's doing now? Her mother paid for her to have extra tuition in mathematics and the sciences. She's now a medical doctor. Amen. Parents, you have to be in the gap for your children. It's not just spiritually, it's in every area of their lives. Okay, I nearly finished. Be a good role model. <laughs> I look at some children and I see their parents and I cringe because I want to tell the parents because of your attitude to your child, your child has got that behavior. Parents, we must be careful, we must be disciplined, we must show respect, we must be careful what we speak in the hearing of our children because when you think they're not listening, they'll be there repeating it to somebody else. We went to church and we watched people at church and we looked how butter wouldn't melt. 
But when we went home, we could jump in the spirit like sister so-and-so. We could speak in tongues like brother so-and-so. They are watching. They are watching. Be careful the seeds you are sowing. And finally, apologize when you are wrong. And that's a hard one. <laughs> Many of us think we can't say sorry to children, but you know something? If you learn to apologize to your child, so you know what? And it's human. We make mistakes. Sometimes I would lash out at the wrong child. And there's one of them, my second child, she's very much like me. And she would stand up to me you know, and say, Mom, you haven't apologized yet. I said, for what? With an edge in my voice. For what? She said, you were wrong when you did this. This one isn't going to let it go. And I had to apologize. And it's important to apologize. Uh, finally, the last scripture that I'd like us to share. Are we able to bring up? Yes. Okay. It's not very big. For the time, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11 reads, For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. A harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness, in conformity to God's will, in purpose, thought, and action, resulting in right living and right standing with God. When anyone is being corrected, being punished, they don't say thank you, because it's not nice. But you know something? As an adult, I went back to Jamaica, and I heard myself saying to my father, thank you for the years of discipline, because they've made me the woman I am. Your children were necessarily appreciate. You tell them off now, but children, take it. It's medicine. My oldest, uh, God bless her, she saved me a lot of grief. She said to her siblings, because there are a few years between them, she said, whatever mommy says, do it. Just listen to her. Make your life easier. And on the whole, they did. As a consequence, she said, mom will be proven right. She's lived, she's been there, she's got not the dress, not the t-shirt. Our mom's got the dress, so listen and do as she says. And as a consequence, I had no problems with my kids. Kid, parents, your role is to be a parent, not a friend. Be a parent first and foremost. When you're adults, you can be their friend.